Hello team, welcome back to Caroline Chisholm. Uh, we've already covered part one and we covered this material. We learned about how she was the immigrant's friend and how she helped our poor migrants in Australia. We, 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 we learned about how Caroline Chisholm moved to Sydney. Uh, we learned about how she was a real helper of women, of women immigrants uh, specifically. But we're up to the new material now and I call this Caroline Chisholm part two. So. Come with me on this journey and let's learn one or two things. Okay, so further achievements of Caroline Chisholm, okay? Caroline's battle for the immigrants' home was only just beginning. Remember, she built this home, but the building was actually filthy and it was full of rats. So it wasn't a nice place for her to live. Now, this bit in yellow here, I actually do want you to write that down for me. So make sure you write that down for me here. I tried to circle that. I'll, I'll have another go in red. Now, Carolyn tried to juggle her home duties with her work to help female migrants. So remember that she was actually a mother and she was... um. She was married, obviously, and she had nine children, nine children, and, and a lot of people actually criticised her. They criticised her. I think I've written that down there. They criticised her, which means made fun of her or knocked her or gave her some verbal trouble. They, they, they criticised her. They said bad things about her, and the bad thing they said was that she neglected her own children because she, you know, she was uh, very busy helping the, the poor women immigrants uh, of Australia, these people who knew off the boat. She was giving them a place to live and homes and somewhere to live and uh, jobs and uh, yeah, she had nine children and the people did say that she didn't look after her own children enough now, whether that was true or not now, that'll be up to you and there's an image of her and, and all her beautiful children uh, just there for you uh, this yellow I do want you to copy that down in your book thank you it is important so the female immigrants home though was a great success and within two years Carolyn had found jobs and homes for at least a thousand women which is a remarkable achievement and which is why we remember Remember her today. Further achievements, there's more that she did. One, so her home moved most of the women off the streets, but she could see that future immigrants, people who were still to come over, would still need some help. So she actually convinced the authorities that something had to be done about the dreadful, the appalling conditions on the ships being used to bring people to Australia from England. I mean, there was sickness on these boats. There was rats on these boats. There was a lack of food on these boats. Now, one of the most important things she did was she actually set up an employment office. And this is in yellow, so I want you to write this down. This is in yellow. She set up an employment office and was the first person in Australia to introduce work contracts which were agreements about working conditions and pay. So in the old, old days before Carolyn Chisholm, if you if you got a job, you'd get a job at the butcher, for example, and that was it. You got a job. It was a handshake and you got paid so much and, you know, you hoped that you got paid. You hoped that the butcher would give you money and if the butcher didn't give you money or treated you poorly, a tough luck. Uh, you could quit or he could fire you unfairly or fairly. But Caroline Chisholm introduced work contracts, and work contracts are really, really they're like documents, and you write down information on the document, and you say, well, I'm going to turn up at this hour, and and uh, you're going to pay me this much, and and the employer and the employee agree what the working conditions are going to be like, and then they sign the document. So work contracts actually are made things a lot fairer for everybody, and it's, it's a bit of an agreement about what the conditions are going to be like, and, and how much you're going to be paid as well. And so that was a big thing that she did for Australia. Uh, she continued to travel the entire country to find jobs and homes for about 11,000 migrants, and most of them were young women. And amazingly, in all this time, she accepted no money for her work. Make sure you write down this yellow paragraph in your book. Thank you. So, not only was she a helper just in uh, the 1800s, but specifically she was a helper in what was called the gold rush. And that's a that's a big deal for Australia, the gold rush. Gold was found, oh, I don't entirely remember, early 1800s in Australia. And a lot of men, a lot of men left their jobs in the city and went to find gold and to make their fortunes and to dig up gold in, uh, in Bathurst, in places like Bathurst and other areas all around Australia, particularly in, um, in the Melbourne area of Australia. Um, during the 1800s, there was a major gold rush in Australia. So all the men went. Mrs. Chisholm helped women and children 
travel into the gold fields to meet their husbands by providing shelter sheds and cooking facilities for women and children. So you can see she really had a heart for women. She really had a heart for women who needed help. She really had a heart for children as well. And she organized this. These women who went to join their husbands who were working hard on the gold fields, these men had left their jobs to go and try and make some money on the gold fields. She helped them uh, by, by, by providing shelter sheds. That's sheds they could shelter in from the heat, from the cold, from the hard conditions and cooking facilities for women and children. So that's another thing she did. That is all in yellow. So I want you to write all this down, all this material in yellow. Don't write down the other stuff. There's too much, but write down all the material in yellow. Thank you. Okay, next. Okay. Uh, this is the last slide in this section. She did return to England and then she actually came back afterwards, but we're going to learn about how she returned to England now. After all this, she actually went back to England to work on further ways she could help migrants. She really had a heart for the migrants, particularly the female migrants. This is what she did whilst in England. She published pamphlets that advertised immigration. So she tried to advertise how good Australia was and tried to get people to move from England to Australia. She, she, she encouraged them to do this. Um, she actually established a family colonize, colonization loan, which is a big word. Uh, this mean, colonization means to move and to occupy another country. And a loan means someone would give you money to do it. So it did cost money to come to Australia. It wasn't free. And, you know, when you got here, you had to have some money to get going and get set up. And, you know, you didn't always get off the boat and get a job. So what she did was she actually organised banks and governments to loan money to individuals who were going to take themselves and their families to Australia. And they, they would give them some money to do that. And then people would pay that back eventually as they got a job in Australia and settled and the rest of it. And, and, and that's much like the rest of it. She organised these loans and employment for immigrant families. So really point A and B, uh, sorry, B and C are the same. So A, she published pamphlets advertising immigration, which pamphlets are like ads. B, she organised, she established this loan system, the family colonisation loan. Remember, colonise means to go to another country and, and, and be there. And C, she organised these loans and employment, actual employment for these immigrant families. So she made made it easier for people to go from England to Australia. And there's a picture of people leaving from England to go to Australia. That's the end of part two of Caroline Chisholm. Make sure that you write down uh, the material that is in yellow. Now, if you're finished ahead of time, great. You can do this for me. You can choose one. You can write a brief part poem about Caroline Chisholm. That's option number one. Two, you can draw a neat picture about something that has struck you about what we have been discussing uh, about Caroline Chisholm so far. Three, you can write for me a series of questions that you would like to ask Caroline Chisholm. I'd like to see at least five questions. Okay, you don't have to do all those. You can choose one, two, or three. Thanks for listening.